Austin was working super hard on a makeup tutorial show. She was teaching smoky eyes to folks out there who really wanted to know when some freaky deaky science stuff only understood by nerds. Zapped into old radio shows that kind you might never have heard. Now she should probably be trying to get out But Madison, she's having fun Living an old time radio life Our explanation is done Madison is on the air Tales of the Texas Rangers Texas, more than 260,000 square miles, and 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. Okay, so before Chuck Norris, there was Tales of the Texas Rangers. Now from the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The show is basically as if someone listened to Dragnet and was like, you know what this show needs? Horses. Case for tonight, Blood Trail. Oh, that's me. Gotta go. Enjoy! It is 7.30 on a Saturday evening in July 1929. For a week, an oppressive blanket of heat has surrounded the town of Whitney in the Texas Panhandle. Despite the unpleasant weather, however, Whitney is enjoying its usual Saturday night activities. Sheriff Madison Standish strolls down Main Street, complaining aloud to no one in particular. Texas in a heat wave? Ugh. Are none of these old-timey shows set at a beach resort in the Bahamas? God, I could go for a Mai Tai. Mildred, you are as stubborn as a mule. I declare, that woman will... Oh, howdy, Sheriff. OMG, Harriet, what is the problem now? And please tell me it's not about kids karate chopping your picket fence again. The parents got really P.O.'d when I put those eight-year-olds in jail. Ah, oh, it's nothing, Sheriff. Just an argument with Mildred. You two are besties. It's totes fine to fight. Unless one of you is accused of arson and the other one throws you under the bus just because you went on one little date with her boyfriend and barely made out with him. Well, it's just, you see, I've been living here in Whitney near 40 years now. Been around the panhandle all my life. Oh, and she told you how pathetic that was? Um, no. I said this is the hottest July since ought to, and Mildred says it was hotter the summer of 18. Yeah, you see, that's why it's pathetic. You're arguing about the weather. You two need to get lives. Or laid, or something. Hey, who's that over there, Sheriff? Ah, man. Looks like a drunk. Wait a sec. Ain't that old Doc Thomas? I didn't know Doc was a drinking man. Well, how can anyone not enjoy a satisfying glass of aviation American gin, great straight, or in any number of tasty cocktail recipes? What are you talking about, Sheriff? I'm trying to kiss Ryan Reynolds' ass so he'll come on the show. Shut up. Please drink responsibly. Well, I can't believe that Doc would be drinking. He's got office hours till 7 on Saturdays. (gasps) He's stumbling into the street. Oh, man. The way you yokels drive, somebody's gonna hit him. Come on! Look out, Doc! Look out! Stop, you stupid drunk! Careful, Doc! Look out! Look Look out! out. Ah! Doc, here! Help him! Is he all right? He's hurt bad. Oh, dude. Look at all that blood. I think I'm gonna puke. Do something! Quick, somebody help him! Sheriff, help him! Sheriff, do something! I am doing something! I'm working on not puking. One of y'all call Doc Fields and tell him to hurry! I'll do it, Harriet. Let's get him up on the sidewalk. Yeah, you guys get him out of the street. I'll, uh, walk down to the end of the block in direct traffic. Sheriff! Man, you'd think after all the true crime shows I've watched, I'd be desensitized to blood. So much blood. I didn't think that car hit him that bad. I don't think it did, actually. Look at his shirt. It's soaked like it's been bleeding for a while. You mean when he was staggering down the street, he was already hurt? Yeah, check out his head. Ew, uh, is that skull showing? 
Okay. Puking is imminent. Who would do that to old Doc Thomas? Mm, dunno. And he's not gonna tell us. Dude's dead. Oh. Uh, and his eye just ruptured. Excuse me. Once Sheriff Madison finished vacating her stomach alongside a parked Studebaker, she easily traced Doc Thomas's path by following the drops of blood he'd left on the sidewalk. The trail led her directly to the doctor's office. It was then she called for a Texas Ranger, and Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned. The Ranger didn't arrive until 5 o'clock that Sunday morning. He entered the doctor's office waiting room. Sheriff? It's Ranger Pearson. Uh... Sheriff? Mm, huh? You called for a Texas Ranger? Oh, yeah. Crime scene's in there. Help yourself. I'm here to assist in the investigation. Sure. Okay. Sheriff, perhaps you'd like to share with me your findings so far? Dude, it's 5 a.m. I called you at, like, 8. Sorry I couldn't get here sooner. I was in Wichita Falls. Did you at least grab us some coffee and donuts? I prefer chocolate frosted, but... Right now, I'm not going to be picky. No, I didn't. Well, why don't you show me the crime scene and uh, afterwards we can have breakfast? Ugh, okay. I puked up most of my dinner last night, so I'm totally starving right now. As you can see, nothing in the waiting room except a really uncomfortable couch. Oh, my neck is going to be so stiff today. But the big show is in the exam room. Ah. I see. Smashed furniture, broken glass. Doctor must have put up quite a fight. Looks like he was trying to paint the walls with his own blood. Do you know what the actual cause of death was? Brain matter meets skull fragments? Didn't he have a nurse here with him? Nah, he couldn't afford one. He was a total old school country doctor. He got paid in like pies and live chickens and stuff. Did he have any money on him when he died? About half a dozen eggs. Well, the phone's been ripped out. Looks like he was trying to call somebody. Ah, oh, man. And with a rotary phone, it would have taken him epic long just to dial. And you guys don't have 911 yet, so he'd have to patch through to an operator who'd have to connect him to an exchange. It probably would have been faster for him to open a window and yell. By the way, the wires are torn out of the wall on the destruction of this room. I'd say somebody wanted to silence him permanently. Okay, so if somebody wanted to kill the doc, why didn't they? He was stumbling down the street like a freshman leaving their first frat party. I think this will answer your question, Sheriff. You're pointing at blood. This room looks like the interior design was done by John Carpenter. You're going to have to give me a little more than that. Now, this spot of dry blood is larger, as if he must have been lying here a few minutes. Could be he got knocked unconscious, killer thought he'd finished his job, and took off. That really shows the incompetence of the killer. A doctor's office full of sharp objects, and you don't stop and stab-stab before you go? <sighs> There's just no work ethic anymore. Here's the doc's appointment book. Only one appointment after 5 o'clock. 6.30, Carl Hinkle. You know him, Sheriff? Oh, yeah, I know him. German dude. I remember because I thought it was suspicious that a German guy was living with rednecks in Texas. Like he might be a Nazi war criminal or something. But then I remembered it's only 1929, so no World War II yet. World War II? Oh, don't worry about that. It's 1929. You got time. But I would sell your stocks before October. So, you know this Carl Hinkle? Oh, dude, yes! I totes forgot! Carl Hinkle's wife! The doctor delivered her baby about six weeks ago, and then Mrs. Hinkle died. Too bad she didn't call the midwife. I bet those super liberal nuns from England could have saved her. Hinkle blamed Doc Thomas for his wife's death? Yep, he's been talking smack about the doc all over town. I see. Come on, Sheriff. Let's wake him up and have a talk with him. After breakfast. This investigation is urgent. Time is of the essence. Yeah, well, then maybe the next time I call for a Texas Ranger, it won't take you like nine hours to get here. Come on, cowboy. You're buying. After taking up valuable investigation time to stop for donuts, Ranger Pearson and Sheriff Madison finally reached Carl Hinkle's home at 6.30 a.m. No one answered their knock, so they walked around to the back door. Hinkle was washing some things out in a laundry tub on the back porch. He was a big, blonde man who looked at his visitors solidly as they approached. 
Wow. No wonder it took you nine hours to get here. What's that 1920s car of yours have? A golf cart motor? Morning, Chef Madison. Uh, Carl, this is Ranger Pearson. He wants to talk to you. Oh, and we brought donuts. I ate all the chocolate frosted. Thank you. I have eaten. Excuse me a moment. I, I want to dry my hands. Pretty early to be doing washing, isn't it, Mr. Hinkle? Yeah, I wash for the baby. Some of your own clothes there, too, aren't there? <laughs> yes. I wash for myself, too. You always do the baby clothes yourself, Carl? Dude! In a propes? His wife is dead! Mr. Hinkle... So what? A man can't do his own laundry? Should he get his six-week-old daughter to do it because it's women's work? Mr. Hinkle... I suppose you find it weird there's a female sheriff, right? I was wondering how long you were going to dance around the subject. Mr. Hinkle... They voted for me, you know. The whole town of Whitney. They voted me their sheriff. Right, Carl? It's true. We saw her name on the ballot and never before we heard of a woman named Madison, so we thought she was a man. Oh, shut up, you murderer. Murderer? Dr. Thomas was murdered in his office last night, Mr. Hinkle, and you were the last appointment in his appointment book. So, did you visit Doc Thomas last night? Well, yes, I did. Uh, I owe him money, so I go to repay him. Every week I pay a little. Do you usually make an appointment just to pay him money? Neither. Uh, no. I have an ache in my leg. I asked the doctor to fix it. Yeah, but he killed your wife, so you killed him. Nine. It is not so. I just think he should have been more careful with my wife. Now I'm left with an empty house and, and an empty heart. If he'd been more careful, this wouldn't be. If you felt the doctor was responsible for your wife's death, why would you seek medical help from a man you didn't trust? To be fair, that's not up to him. That's up to his insurance company. The doctor could be an axe murderer selling organs on the black market, but hey, he's in network. Well, I think with my wife, he made the mistake. For this, he will be with me twice careful. Do you know, Mr. Hinkle, that you were the last person to see the doctor before he was attacked? Nein, I was not. When I come from the office, a man sits in the waiting room? Hopefully not sitting on that couch. Man, I need a neck massage. Do you know who the man was? Yeah, sure. I've seen him many times. Uh, It was, uh... Mr. Horner. Do you know this Mr. Horner, Sheriff? Yeah, Matt Horner, right? He works on Jim Ford's ranch. He's a, uh... Oh, man, you're gonna make me say it. He's a, uh... Cowpoke. A cowpoke on Jim Ford's ranch. Oh, well, Sheriff, I think we ought to go see him. I know it gets lonely on the range, but I can't believe it's actually a job title. Ranger Pearson and Sheriff Madison drove out to the Ford ranch. The trip took longer than it should have because the sheriff didn't know where it was and kept on blaming the... GPS? The Ford Ranch was a small place that had seen better days. A young ranch hand was mending a fence near the barn. Howdy. You Jim Ford's cowhand? They do hand jobs too? Oh, howdy there, Ranger. Sheriff. Uh, We're looking for Matt Horner. You seen him? Oh, I'm sorry, Ranger. I only come to work for Mr. Ford yesterday. I know there's one man who works with him, but I don't know his name. Is Mr. Ford around? I, uh, think he's with the cattle. Oh, those poor cows. Hashtag me moo. I expect Mr. Ford's gonna be here any minute now, but I don't think that other fella is with him. No? And why is that? Please don't tell me you also have hogs. A pig and a poke. See, Ranger, when I come in this morning to get me a coffee, he ain't here. Then when Mr. Ford go out to the car, he still ain't here. Made Mr. Ford mighty angry. Oh, here's Mr. Ford. He'll tell you about that fella. Howdy, Sheriff. Morning, Ranger. (laughs) Take care of the horse, eh, Lester? Right away, sir. What can I do for you? Nothing. Until I could get the ASPCA out here. We're looking for that hand of yours, Matt Horner. Well, I reckon that makes three of us. When I find him, I'm gonna break him in half. All these years, and he walks out on me just when I need him most. I hear that. Most of my boyfriends break up with me just before the rent is due. When did you see him last, Mr. Ford? Uh, yesterday evening. He asked me if he could go into town, and I said sure, if he'd be back here by daybreak. This morning, he ain't showed up, and I don't reckon he will, neither. What makes you think that? I checked, and uh, all his stuff's gone. Yep, same. I wake up on the first, and their underwear and Xbox are gone. 
after all I did for that boy, Matt Horner. Now, when I only need him a day or so longer, he takes off. You moving somewhere, Mr. Ford? Yeah, I usually had to move out by the 5th or else face a super pissed off landlord. My mom could be a real hard ass. I'm selling out, Ranger. Lock, stock, and barrel. I've had all I want of ranching. When Matt Horner left you yesterday, was he sick? Sick? (laughs) That boy never had a sick day in his life. You made him an independent contractor, didn't you? All the joys of working full-time with zero of the benefits. Here, uh, how come you're so anxious to find out about Matt? A doctor in town by the name of Thomas was murdered last night. Oh, yeah. I heard about old Doc Thomas. Shame. He was a fine feller. What's that got to do with Matt? He was seen at the doc's office last night around the time the doctor was murdered. Of course, I'm sure you didn't give Matt any health care, so he probably couldn't afford the doctor's visit. You think Matt was the one who killed him? We don't know yet, but his skipping out is not going to help him any. No, I don't reckon it will. You just never know, do you? And who'd have thought? Boy, I had working for me was a killer. You better start paying that Lester living wage or he may be next. There's a breaking point for everyone you know. And this is Texas. Your essential workers carry guns. On the way back to town, Jace radioed Austin and requested an all-points bulletin on Matt Horner. Then he and Sheriff Madison started combing the countryside, but to no avail. The sheriff complained relentlessly about the heat all day, as if her disapproval of the weather would somehow make a difference. Early Monday morning, Ranger Pearson stopped at the sheriff's office to pick her up. Morning, Sheriff. Uh, Sheriff? Sheriff? Huh, what? I took the liberty of bringing coffee and donuts. Oh? I'm hating you less today, Ranger. Pleased to hear it. You about ready to get moving? You know, I haven't brushed my teeth since Saturday morning. Can you give me, like, two minutes? Since we'll be sharing a car together all day today, happy to wait. Damn it. Hang on a sec. Hello, Sheriff Standish. No, Madison's my first name. Guess it is. Guess it... uh, Why are you calling me? You did? Where? Yep, we're on our way. Well, Matt Horner's been found. Good, they bring him in? Nope, we gotta go get him. Dude's dead. Aw, no chocolate frosted? In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers. Presenting Canary P.I.N. A commercial spot. A J. Henry production. Do you like mystery? Canary P.I. Intrigue. Canary P.I. Horror. Canary P.I. Peculiar short stories through the eyes of me, Canary, your neighborhood gumshoe with a revolving cast of colorful characters and odd situations. Season two is a wrap in our one-off special, The Dreaded Drive-In of Dog Island is out now. Unserialized, so don't be afraid to jump in. Available wherever you get your audio drama podcasts. Your sons are Dracula and your wife's cheating on you? Ugh, why me? We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Blood Trail. Matt Horner's body was discovered in the brush by two boys on a camping trip. Ranger Pearson and Sheriff Madison drove within a mile of the spot where the highway patrolman was waiting with the boys. The youngsters pointed out where they'd found the body. The only way to reach the remote area was on horseback. Sheriff Madison made it well known to all within earshot that she was in no way a fan of horses. Oh God, are we there yet? (sighs) You could have ridden your own horse instead of squeezing into the saddle on mine. Would have been easier on charcoal too. (sighs) Sorry about this, Charky. I'm really scared of horses, okay? Bad carousel incident. That's how we lost our first nanny. I can still hear the gears grinding and her screams. Her screams echo in my sleep. Well, we're nearly there. Ow! No, you're not. You're strapped to my belt and pulling it really tight. Don't let go, Nanny. Don't let go. We're here. <sighs> Look, there's the three big boulders those kids described. Whoa, Sharky, whoa, whoa. Get me off this thing. It's all right, Sharky. I'll make sure she walks back. 
<laughs> Come on, I'll help you down. Uh. Uh. You all right? Lightly traumatized, but physically fine. If you're not good with horses, maybe being a sheriff in Texas isn't the best job for you. Yeah, that's why I couldn't stay working at an off-track betting place. Well, that and they fired me for stealing from the till. Let's head over there. That must have been where the boys had their campfire, off to the left. Every time I drive between L.A. and Vegas, I think about how many bodies must be dumped out there in the desert. I also think the same thing when I visit Disneyland. Should be right around this middle boulder by what those kids said. Uh, There. Let me pull that brush away from it. Okay, Sheriff, that the man we've been looking for? Uh, I think so? Hard to tell. He's all bloated and puffy and looks like buzzards were pecking at him. Oh, I might puke again. Shot twice through the chest at close range by the look of those powder burns. Let's turn them over. Pass. You know, there are a lot of jobs in law enforcement that don't entail field work. Mm, duly noted. Well, no blood on the ground, so he wasn't shot here. Whoever did it carried him out here after he was dead. You think it was those two boys who did it? The ten-year-olds? I'm just saying, with all this desert out here, it's pretty convenient those two boys just happened to stumble upon the body while they were camping. Let's see what we can find in his pockets. Wallet, a little bit of money, and... Oh, well, this is interesting. A box of prescription pills. Quaaludes? No. Hey, what do we really know about this Doc Thomas? I mean, he did kill Mrs. Hinkle. This could mean Matt was ill after all. And Jim Ford wouldn't give him a sick day. Typical boss. Do you know how many times I work sick at my food service jobs because my managers threatened to fire me if I called out? It wasn't bats that spread COVID. It was shitty bosses. It's a cinch there's a tie-in between this murder and Doc Thomas getting killed. We need to find out what kind of an ailment Matt had. How exactly could we do that? Matt's dead, and it looks like some coyotes made a meal out of his fingers. Ew. Well, there's another way he can do some talking even after his death. Seance? Autopsy. Yeah, better to not dabble in the black arts. I tried that after my nanny died, and all it did was trap her inside my Malibu Barbie. It was creepy, so I had my brother blow her up with a bottle rocket. Ranger Pearson and Sheriff Madison got Matt Horner's body into Whitney by one o'clock that afternoon and requested the county medical examiner make a rush autopsy. They waited in the pathology lab at the hospital until he was finished. Sheriff Madison was as fidgety as a toddler in a fine restaurant and equally as disciplined. Sheriff, perhaps you shouldn't be touching all of those vials and test tubes. I actually really like taking chem lab. I mean, what other class can you play with fire? Aside from English when we acted out the crucible. My teacher was not expecting that level of realism. Just the same, it'd probably be best to leave those two alone. Is it bad I just breathed in some of that orange powder? Well, I've been able to determine... Is that broken glass on the floor? There really should be more safety protocols in here. Hmm, it's only the 1920s. Well, after a ton more stupid people do stupid things, the government will require warnings about stuff that is totally common sense. I suppose that explains why you're touching the test tubes. You're welcome. So, Doctor, tell us what you discovered about Matt Horner. I only made a preliminary examination, but I can tell you one thing definitely. Someone really ought to clean up this glass. It's clearly a safety hazard. What can you tell us, Doctor? Matt Horner died sometime Saturday night, probably before midnight. That would have only been a few hours after Doc Thomas died. You got a janitor we could call or something? Perhaps you should just try and avoid stepping in the glass for now. So, was Matt Horner sick? Indeed. The boy was gravely ill. I observed a section of the dead man's spleen. It's very badly diseased. Do you know what it was? Anthrax. Anthrax? Eh, I prefer Metallica. Specifically the Cliff Burton years. Anthrax? But that's a cattle disease. Also found in man. Contracted from sick stock. More contaminated ground. Does that help you, Ranger? Maybe. 
it might just clear up our whole case. Thanks, Doctor. You're welcome. Come on, Sheriff. We need to get out to Jim Ford's ranch. Ah, see? You poke a cow enough times, and she'll seek revenge. You're still stepping in the broken glass. Yes, I am. So, how are we going to know which cow killed him? Or do you think they all ganged up on him? (gasps) Oh my god! It's Animal Farm! The barnyard animals have risen against their human masters! I think what we're looking at here is some sick cattle, and could explain why Jim was so anxious to sell his ranch all of a sudden. Okay, wait. Wrapping my brain around this. So, Ford knew the cattle were sick? But he didn't want anyone else to know so he could sell them? It's possible. That's like when I tried to sell my Honda Civic and conveniently left out the seven accidents I'd been in. Eight! Eight accidents! Whew! That auto body shop in Tijuana could work miracles. Chances are Matt found out the cattle had anthrax, but didn't know he had it himself. And that's why he went to see the doctor! And once Doc Thomas knew there was anthrax around, he was bound to report it. Then how did Jim Ford find out about Matt's diagnosis? Don't you people in the 1920s have doctor-patient privilege? Honestly, I have no idea what the medical field was like in the 20s. I half expected to find leeches in that lab. However Jim found out, he might have killed both the Doc and Matt to keep them quiet. Do you think he's still at the ranch? What if he sold it already? How long is escrow in Texas? We better hurry. Ooh, be careful. This 1920s car might actually break 10 miles an hour. Jim's old jalopy isn't here. His car is a jalopy? That thing you call a cop car looks like you operated with pedals. Seriously, I get why you still have a horse. Could mean he went into town. I doubt he'd try to make a getaway in that thing. Let's try this door. Should I have a gun? This is really feeling like I should have a gun. But I was doing the whole Andy Griffith thing and not carrying one. But now I'm thinking maybe Barney was right. I don't think anyone's here. Not that I've ever used a gun. My brother did once. That's how we lost our second nanny. Door's open. Looks like the bedroom's back this way. He didn't shoot her or anything. She took it from him and then used it to rob a 7-Eleven. Apparently she was wanted in three states. Doesn't appear like he's taken much with him if he's gone. But if he skipped out, he's probably traveling light. Sheriff, listen. What is that horrible sound? Are they slaughtering the cows out back? Sounds like that jalopy of his is coming up the road. Let's get outside. We want to take him alive. Don't shoot unless you have to, Sheriff. Wait, there is going to be shooting? I just told you I don't have a gun! How about I cower over here by this rain barrel? Oh, that's not Jim at all. That's Lester. Good thing. I was prepared to get him very wet. Actually, probably not. I doubt I could lift this thing. Well, how there, Ranger? Sheriff? Where's Mr. Ford, Lester? He just uh, made himself a big sale on the ranch. Got a pretty penny for it. Do you know where he's going? Oh, I took him to the railroad depot so he could wait for the train. Which train? The one that goes that way. South. North. I'd go south. Mexico? If your choice is Mexico or Nebraska? Hola, amigos. What time does the train leave Whitney? 4.32. It's 4.15 now. Come on, Sheriff. We're going to catch a train. Get the horse. We're not going to outrun a train in that car of yours. Come on. Are we seriously running to catch a train? Hey, Porter, don't close those doors. Oh my god, this cliche is used in every movie with a freaking train. Can't we build suspense without so much running? Grab onto that railing, Sheriff. Uh, I hate you! Made it. Just so there's no confusion, I will not be leaping off of this train, climbing onto the roof of this train, or dangling from any part of this train. Is that understood? Might not be up to me, Sheriff. (sighs) He's not in here. Not this car. We'll try them all. Ah, damn it. He better be on this stupid train. Ooh, is that a dining car? Dining cars in movies always look so luxurious. Then I took Amtrak, and it was one wobbly table and a $6 can of Coke. Oh, 
Damn, it smells good. Traveling used to be so elegant. Now the highlight of a trip is guessing which redneck is gonna get drunk and force us to land in Wichita. Well, looks like Jim Ford got hungry. Oh, dude, that's him. His back is to us, what do we do? I still don't have a gun, but I might have some glass shards in my shoe. Let's talk to him first. Sit down at his table. Oh. Howdy, Jim. Sup? Uh, what? Mind if we join you, Mr. Ford? No, uh, please, sit down. I, uh, I didn't know you two were traveling north. South really is a better choice. We, uh, heard you sold the ranch. Well, word sure does get around, don't it? <laughs> yep, I, I sold my ranch like I said I was gonna do. How much did you get for the sick cows? But, uh, what are you talking about, Sheriff? Matt Horner had anthrax. He got it from your cattle. Why, why you're crazy. Not as crazy as you thinking you can get away with killing Doc Thomas and Matt Horner. Can you prove that, Ranger? Has anyone ever asked a cop, can you prove it, when they weren't guilty? Oh, I think we can prove it. And we'll start with this. Hey, hey what are you doing? I'm oh, just taking the gun out of your shoulder holster. It was so big I couldn't miss it. Ooh, can I have it? No. Well, Ranger, you got my gun, but you still can't prove nothing. I won't have to. I've got a ballistics lab for that. And while we're waiting for the lab report, you'll cool your heels in jail. On what charge? You can't hold me until you get some proof. Another thing guilty people always say. Like, duh, the cops know the rules. Are you saying you can't hold me? Like, the cop is going to be all, OMG, I totes forgot. (laughs) I guess you got me. We'll hold you for carrying a concealed weapon in a public place. Uh, hello, Texas? In my day, the permitless carry legislation literally says anyone can carry a concealed or holstered handgun in public places without a license, safety training, or background check as long as they're over 21. Dead serious, September 2021. I vote we move south by southwest to Oklahoma. Hands, please. Oh, what is she saying? I'm saying you're about 100 years too early to take advantage of the Texas gun nut laws. Why, you... Ah! Ranger, get him! She's pulling my hair! He's running to the other end of the car! I can't fire. There are too many people. Oh, I swear to God if he goes up on that freaking roof. The crowd is slowing him down. I got him. Let me go! Take it easy, Ford. You'll get off this train soon enough. Then you'll take another little trip that ends in Huntsville. Huntsville? Fun fact, the Huntsville prison opened in 1849 and has conducted all of the executions in the state of Texas from then to modern day. Yes, that's why I mentioned it. Ah, Texas. Loose gun laws, severe death penalty laws. I'd say the Old West will never die, but chances are it'll be shot or put to death. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Ballistics evidence proved conclusively that Jim Ford had killed Matt Horner. He was tried and convicted of first-degree murder. Ten months later, he confessed to the killing of Doc Thomas with a paperweight from the doctor's office desk. Jim Ford died in Huntsville Penitentiary of a kidney disease on June 17, 1930, just 20 days before he was due to go to the electric chair. Sheriff Madison resigned as the Sheriff of Whitney due to her inability to ride a horse, lack of gun experience, a completely fabricated resume describing her years as a Beverly Hills cop, and finally, after releasing a ranch full of cattle to face their abusers, at which time they stampeded through downtown Main Street, causing thousands in property damage. drama Tales of the Texas Rangers ran from 1950 through 1952 on NBC with Ranger Jace Pearson played by the well-known movie star of the era, Joel McRae. McRae was actually a real-life rancher. With the money he'd made in Hollywood, McRae bought a ranch in what is now known as Thousand Oaks, California, about an hour drive from Hollywood, in a modern-day car, where he actively worked his ranch that produced 200,000 pounds of beef each year. McRae was known for saying ranching was his occupation and acting his hobby. Hey, 
everybody, it's Madison. Thank you so much for listening. Have you signed up yet for our free e-newsletter? There's a ton of not found anywhere else Madison stuff. Sign up on our website, madisonontheair.com. And also a big thanks to everyone who is helping with our campaign to get Ryan Reynolds on this show. Every day, I'm tweeting to at Van City Reynolds, hashtag Ryan on Madison. Help me by retweeting, and maybe he'll join us. Hey, weirder things have happened. Okay, announcer dude, roll the credits. Madison on the Air was written and produced by Chrissy Talon Sage with music composition and audio engineering by Jeremy Sage. The role of Madison Standish was played by Chrissy Talon Sage. Jerry Kokich appeared as Ranger Jace Pearson. Other actors in the cast were Matthew Bird as Jim Ford, Steve Jun as Lester, Sharon Grunwald as Harriet, Kareem Confley as Carl Hinkle, Paul Arabisi as the medical examiner, and Jonathan Winstead as the narrator. <laughs>